Hi everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we get to talk about 12 Days and this is published by Calliope. You guys, can you tell our mood? We're in a mood, 12 Days mood. We are in a, a, we are in a mood, a festive mood you might say. <laughs> we are deep in the 12 Days of Christmas right now as we speak. So we are playing 12 Days. This is, I guess you could kind of say, kind of a trick-taking game, yep. in a sense. Uh, you win tricks, however, by playing the lowest card. There's also kind of a gift-giving aspect of this game. You know, it matches the theme. And Mrs. Turn and Mrs. Claus even make a small appearance. Let me give you a quick overview of what it looks like on the table. All right, here's our setup for 12 days. Uh, quite simply, we've got two stacks of cards here. We've got one, which are the 12 days of Christmas. That's how many rounds are going to be in the game. And we've got over here all the, tw all the gifts of the 12 days of Christmas. Everyone is going to get dealt out a hand of 12 cards. And I like to do is I kind of like to order them in the numeric order there. But what you're going to do is you are going to start the round by giving someone a gift, a card out of your hand. So you want to pass this to, to the left. Let's say, let's say Bethany's over here. I'm going to give this over to her. And then whoever's on my right, I'm going to take a card from them over into my hand. So we still have 12 cards in our hand. But now what we're going to do is we're all going to take a card and we're going to play it. Um, so we're all going to put it in the middle there. We're going to flip them over. Whoever has the lowest card is going to win the trick. And the tricks are worth however, you know, what the number is. So, for instance, the, uh, the first day of Christmas is worth one point. You know, the ninth day of Christmas is worth nine points. And the cards are similarly distributed. So, there's only one gift on the first day. Uh, on the twelfth day, there's twelve di gifts. So, basically, you have uh, twelve number twelves, you have eight number eights, two number twos, that kind of thing. That's how the cards are distributed. So the lower the card, the more rare it is. And therefore, whatever the lowest card was played is going to win that trick. If someone else had played a 7, for instance, they would get that trick. All right, then we would all draw another card off the top of the deck, bring our hand still at 12 cards, and then we're on to the next round. We're going to keep on doing that. We're going to, you know, pass cards to the left. We are going to play cards, uh, trying to win the tricks by getting the lowest card out there, uh, while still maintaining some good cards in your hand. You're going to redraw your hand so you've always got that 12 card hand. The, as the rounds go on, they're worth more and more points until finally the 12th round is worth 12 victory points. Those later rounds are typically where people like to save the, their lowest cards and try to, you know, take those big point cards like that. However, there's another scoring mechanism that happens at the end of the game. Every player is going to look at their hand and they're going to go through the whole number of cards. So whoever has the most number ones is going to get uh, one point. Whoever has the most number twos is going to get two points. All the way up to whoever has the most tens gets ten points. And whoever has the most number elevens gets eleven points. So holding back some of those big numbered cards or even the middle, middle tier cards are still going to be worth a lot of points at the end of the game if you hold those back in your hand. So that's really all there is to the game. Uh, basically, the strategy is uh, typically the lower cards are going to take the higher victory point days, the higher victory point rounds. And then at the end of the game, having, let's like, say, a whole bunch of tens, for instance, would be likely to get you ten points at the end of the game for holding on to those. Now, there's also another hiccup. There is Santa and Mrs. Claus in this card deck. They are worth a zero, so they are the lowest cards in the game, lower than one, obviously. However, when they are played, they automatically do win the trick. So let's say it was, I don't know, the ninth round or something. Whoever played that Santa or Mrs. Claus would automatically take that card, but they don't get to keep it. They have to give it as a gift to someone else. So whoever maybe has the least amount of victory points or whoever just needs kind of a, a Christmas gift maybe. The last trick to this game is, is that numbers that are equal cancel each other out. So let's say um, maybe we're in the, I don't know, we're in the, the fourth round is worth four victory points. Maybe these are the cards that got played. Everyone's going to flip them over. The sevens are going to cancel each other out, and whoever played the ten is actually going to now be the lowest card. They would get that four victory points. So at the end of the game, you're going to count up all the points that you've gotten from your days. You're going to count up all the points that you've gotten from having the most of a certain number, and whoever has the most points wins. So I thought the artwork of this was really fun, that stained glass type of thing. I just thought it was really evocative of the season and it really brought me into the game and I just liked the direction they took with this artwork. From a gameplay, sp gameplay perspective, it was really cool having uh, high cards be useful and having low cards be yeah. useful. Yeah. You know, you want to have those low cards you're going to save to try to take down those, those higher point day you know, tricks, but at the same time you want to hold back some of those maybe higher point cards because you're going to win some points at the end if you have the most. So I really like how every card was valuable in certain situations, so I thought that was cool. I think what made this different than a lot of trick-taking games was that passing of the card. It kind of made it to where, like, I mean, you knew what you were passing people and you knew what people were passing you and you know the probabilities of the cards that are in the deck, and so it was very, let's just say... I made it really easy for one of our games for Ryan to beat me.
because I kept passing him something. Which made me very festive. Which made him very festive indeed. <laughs> this game, it feels like, you know, a traditional card game. Like maybe like something like Spades or Hearts or Euchre if you're from the Midwest. Yeah. Yeah. Something that you uh, can play around with your family. But they put on, you know, some thematic elements, which are kind of nice for board gamers. And But they still made it super easy to teach uh, and, and really easy to play while still giving it some of that, that luck, some of that strategy that you like seeing yeah. in those traditional card games. Um, so, man, this is a game that I, I really enjoy. I don't see us ever going to Christmas without playing this game. Yeah. <laughs> and this is also a game, because it's so invocative of just, you know, basic trick playing or card playing games, I feel like you could teach this at a Christmas gathering or a holiday gathering with people who, let's just say we have people in our lives who like to learn games or like to play games with us, but if it takes longer than 10 seconds to teach, they're just out. Let's just uh, deal with the cards. Let's see how it plays out. Like, yeah, exactly. Well, you like can't that. do that when you're playing like a two-hour game. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure out along the way. No, no, you can't. No. This game you could. Exactly. <laughs> so I think that would be great. You could definitely take that. And for the people that are like that, you can do this with them. I would have loved to have played this with my grandma on my dad's side. This is a game that I think that she would have loved. Um, she's the one who taught me uh, a lot of these card games. And, oh, man, every time I play this game, I just think of her and, like, oh, she would have loved that. Oh, she would have thought that was cute. Oh, she would have thought that was cool. Yeah. And I just that's just what I think about every time I play this game. Um, yeah, just, uh, so, this is, yeah, this holds a special place in my heart, you could say. <laughs> So we really enjoyed this game. Our daughter enjoyed it too. Every time she took a trick, she'd do one of those like goofy giggles, like Hoo -hoo -hoo, just like <laughs> super excited, not even understanding if she was winning or not. But it was just really fun to play um, as a family. It was quick, it was light, and it was still really enjoyable. Yeah, this is the you know the perfect uh, segue from you know, traditional card games into a kind of a board gamey ish yeah. kind of game without uh, without over overwhelming anybody. We had a lot of fun playing Twelve Days. Well, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to find us on all the places. On Facebook, we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. On Instagram, we are Ryan and Bethany. And on Twitter, we are Ryan and Bethany One. And you guys, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> we will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.